Hey guys, last video was about uh, creating an exponential model and then um, using the information from the word problem in order to be able to define growth factor, initial value, and any other things that are affecting. And in this lesson day three, it's actually about, I'm gonna give you an exponential model and you're gonna need to either create or interpret or use. So uh, let's read through the scenario, the entry task. It's an excellent question. And especially, I want you to know that Newton's law of cooling, you know, as in Isaac Newton, the dude that created calculus, so they say. Uh, he is focusing on this function that relates temperature and time and the amount of time that's changing. And the thing with our transformation of functions is that it exists exactly to help us understand what's happening in this problem and all the little numbers that are necessary in order to complete the problem. Uh, zooming in so you can kind of see it from mine. You have your own paper too. But let's interpret this directly before I even read the problem aloud. T, as in the temperature, is dependent on the time that has transpired since the function or since the object began to cool. Uh, T sub A, as in temperature of the surrounding atmosphere, uh, plus, and then you have this quantity, this difference, the initial temperature minus what the current temperature is outside or in the room. And then we have this number right here, 2.718. Man, this number, 2.718, is actually known as Euler's number, and it's the number 2.7. One eight two eight one eight two eight forty five ninety. I'm not even showing you because I'm running off the screen. Uh, one eight two eight forty five ninety forty five and ninety forty five. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so it continues on. The point is, it's like pi in that it's irrational. It's non transcendental. Transcendental. I need to discover that a little bit more. But the point is. Um, it is a number that pops up all the time in exponential equations. It is, it is the crux, the basis of an exponential function and many exponential function models that we ever use. So I'm gonna use 2.718 because it's given in the problem. But if you notice that your calculator or even typing E into Desmos or any other situation is going to turn E into a constant. It is the constant 2.718284590, 1828, 1828, 4590, 45, etc. Knowing that, now we're going to take a look at the information. A detective was called to the scene of a crime where a dead body had just been found. He arrives at the scene and measures the temperature of the dead body at 9.30 p.m. After investigating the scene, he de declares that the person died 10 hours prior. So there's our amount of time transfer uh, at approximately 11.30 a.m. A crime scene investigator arrives a little later and declares that the detective is wrong. She says the person died at approximately 6 a.m., as in 15 and a half hours prior to the measurement of the body temperature. And she claims she can prove it by using Newton's law of cooling, the formula just described. We've defined it. You can read the definitions again. But what we're going to do is we're going to build an exponential. Uh, we're going to build the function plugging in the numbers that we need to know from what we have. We have that... Um, T sub A, the temperature of the room is 68 degrees. And then we're going to add to that from the symbol, we're going to add to that 98.6 degrees, take away 68 degrees. So that's the person's body. Let's say a standard average temperature. Check, that's not temperature, that's pulse. Check your temperature and you'll see that you're really close to 98, 98.6, 37 degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius. And uh, we're going to subtract by the, the ambient temperature of the room, A ambient okay we're gonna multiply this constant this actually is like an initial value now we're gonna multiply by 2.718 now I, I would calculate on my own in my own scenario I would just transfer that to E but we're gonna trust the fact that rounding to three decimals you know when you're a when you're a forensic investigator and you need to have an answer for something, you're gonna just rely on the decimals and not even care like to know that it's E. Somebody just told you the formula was and you're gonna use the formula. We're not that level yet. Uh, K, which is calculated specifically for the room, uh, a percentage loss of heat, it is negative 0.1335, as in you're losing 13.35% of your body heat somehow. And that changes depending on the environment, changes depending on the person. There has to be some sort of element of data collected. And in a later on class in college, should you go this route, uh, any sort of lab study would help you determine that K totally is rely related to the, the environment uh, to the power of T. So negative 0.1335 to the uh, T. And then this is a function, it equals y. However, we know that the, um, the, the person's body 
is, is showing an internal temperature of 72 degrees. So while the function is really a function that we can graph, I wanna specifically look at where y equals 72. Now, there's a lot of decimal calculation involved in this. Um, in a pre-calc classroom, I would expect you to know how to do this by hand, showing me all the steps that you followed in order to get t by itself. Something called logarithms are used. You'd have to use properties of exponents to flip things around and make things change in value. Um, but you're not at that level. And while you will be in a year or two, the thing is right now we have a very powerful tool at our hands called a Desmos. So I uh, prepped this thing already. I typed in 68 plus 98.6 minus 68 times 2.718 to the power of 0.1335x. I use T. Desmos doesn't like using T. It likes to formally define inputs as X. And then I graphed it. I graphed it. I graphed it. Hmm. Oh, it's okay. So this window is, is just too zoomed out to really make things useful. For example, 100 hours later, the maximum amount of hourages later, hourages, is 15.5. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to how to mess with Desmos. And, and any calculator can do this. If you just don't know that it's called as the window. We're gonna mess with the window on Desmos to be a little bit more helpful. So I don't need the X axis, which is, let's add a label. This is time in hours. Uh, and then Y axis, temperature in um, degrees Fahrenheit. Oops, there we go. So uh, you, if you don't know how to add the degree symbol, don't worry about it. But I just wanna make sure I have time and temp right there so I know what I'm referring to. I don't need the X axis to give me negatives. Maybe negative two for a little bit of a handle. And then it's not gonna go past 15.5 by very much. So 16, okay. The Y axis, I have some information there. I have that the body temperature max height is 98.6 degrees and 68 is the temperature of the room. So the body can't cool below that. That would be a refrigerator. So my Y axis really, I don't need to see the X axis at all. I can just say my Y axis uh, my Y interval starts at like 65 degrees and goes up to 100 degrees because that's good enough. On this picture, on this graph, we have our Y intercept, 98.6. Shouldn't be a surprise. And then um, we see that the temperature, it's not decreasing linearly. It's not a straight line decline. It's curving. It's this percent change over time because the colder you are, the the faster you decrease in temperature, you approach on a slope, on a, on a curved slope to the actual value. And um, let me go back just a second. You remember how it was a flat, can I zoom like, that's too much zooming. Let's go to here. Um, it, it eventually came to a flat curve uh, somewhere out here at like 100 hours. That's because you leave something dead in a room long enough, it'll eventually reach room temperature. Ugh. Okay. Uh, what we need to know is when is this line, when is this curve going to reach 72 degrees? Because 72 degrees is the current temperature of the body, 72. So just by doing y equals 72, I create this flat line right here, flat line y equals 72. And over here, oh my goodness, the forensic investigator, she went to college for a reason. She knows how to use Newton's law of cooling. That detective could learn a thing or two. The detective is wrong. Our model predicts, so here you go, our model predicts that the body will reach 72 degrees Fahrenheit in 15.24 hours or roughly 15 hours 15 minutes and so because of that you know 0.25 is a quarter of an hour 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour that's why I did 15 and from that number but the point is that um, yeah it took approximately 15 and a, and a quarter hours 15 and a half hours from the time the person was was murdered or did just died I don't know they had a heart attack or something and natural causes okay so uh, the scenario, we're going to continue this. i got a few more minutes here that I want to make sure I talk about and get you set up for success. The scenario is we are looking at things that cool and what they cool to is important. Sometimes, sometimes things cool up. Like when you pour yourself a glass of milk and then it 
warms up to this sludge that you drink because i don't know don't drink that but the point is it's the the temperature and the surrounding temperature is constantly sucking energy out of the out of the object to make everything equal and and gravy and normal right so uh two cups of coffee they're poured from the same pot next page page 18. Uh, the initial temperature of the cup of coffee is 180 degrees Fahrenheit, and K was calculated specific to the scenario. K is 0.2337, as in there's a 23.37% loss in energy every minute. 23.37% loss in energy. The it's 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 um. I don't need to explain it. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, so use Newton's law of cooling to write both equations. And then we're going to graph them. We'll let Desmos handle some of the graphing capabilities. And then we'll determine when the coffee is safe to drink, when it's below 140 degrees. Desmos will be super helpful, especially because we already have most of the components for Newton's law of cooling right here. We just need to plug in the 68 appropriately, because it's not 68, and uh, everything else. Formally define T sub A, T sub 0, and K. Formally define T sub A, T sub 0, and K, and then plug it in. So I'm going to make a list. Uh, let's talk about coffee cup 1, and I'm going to focus on this specifically. So coffee cup 1 is left sitting in the room, 75 degrees, so we have T ambient. It's 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and we have... Um, Coffee cup two is taken outside where it's 42 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, obviously, it's going to cool faster. T sub zero is the same for both of them. It's 180 degrees Fahrenheit. T sub zero is the same, 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And then K is the same, 23.37%. Let's not write it that way. 0, 2, 3, 3, 7. That's K for both of them. Okay, so uh, complete the table, or not table, I'm saying complete the equation. And I'm just going to jump into Desmos from here. So um, make this a little bit bigger. And if I go like, well, first of all, I don't need you. But if I go here and I delete this, T sub A is 75 and 180 and 75 and what was that? 2337. Okay. So we have this. This uh, temperature change, time is now measured in minutes, so go give that a quick update. I also can't see the y-intercept. I'm wondering if the y-intercept is above 180 or is at 180, so I'm gonna go to, two, yep, there it is, 180. And it's kind of flattening out, but let's go ahead and give myself a little bit more distance out here. Let's go out to, to 50. 50, oh, that's too much, 30. I said too much because look at how flat it gets by the time we get to 30, it's, it's pretty flat. And I'm going to copy and paste all of this because it's the same function with just a name change. Instead of 75 degrees ambient temperature, we're at 42 degrees ambient temperature because we took it outside. Again, 42 plus the change in. Oh, well, that's really low. Graph settings, y-axis. Oh, yeah, 42. I should go down to 30, 35. I want to be able to see the lines. Yep, there we go. Okay, so how much time has elapsed before the cup is safe to, how do we know when the cup is safe to drink? What do we need, what do we need to know? We need to know the, the cup is safe to drink when the temperature is below 140 degrees. So I'm gonna go back to Desmos, I'm gonna add one third line, I'm gonna put y equals 140. Check it out. I don't even need to go all the way out this far. I'm just gonna go to like five minutes. Five, 10 minutes, okay. So green line is the, the coffee cup that's taken outside. It's safe to drink after a minute and 40, uh, no, one minute, 45 seconds. One minute, 30 seconds. <laughs> 1.465 minutes. This is coffee cup two, safe to drink, which translates to a minute and then 0.456 Four six five times sixty, because you know there are sixty seconds in a minute. That gives us approximately thirty seconds, approximately. Okay, maybe like twenty twenty seven. Okay, uh, coffee cup one. Again, going back to the graph, coffee cup one is modeled by the red line. It takes a little longer. It didn't go outside, but it's not too long. Two minutes, approximately two minutes. Two point zero five. 2.1 minutes, which is approximately two minutes. And let's see, 
10, 60, 16, 16, 16 seconds, 10 seconds. I'm good with 10 seconds. I would take the point zero five two and I'd multiply by 60. That's, that's what's happening right here. Okay. So we've estimated when the coffee is safe to drink. Here we have the graph. And so all I got to do with the graph is just do my best to really model this. If I click on the gear and I click on table, I get some points. We should choose, I mean, negatives, who cares? Don't, don't do negatives. Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's good enough. Oh, it's not good enough. Let's do 10. And just make sure you plot these points accurately. 0, 180, 1, and 158, which is a shade under 160. 2 is just a little over 140, et cetera. You get the picture. So um, speed it up. I'm not doing my justice this one. I'm plotting these points on the graph for, for graph 1. And then we do the same thing for graph two. Hit the gear, click on the table, and then we don't need negatives. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And plot these points. And we should be able to see that these points are pretty close to when things actually happen. Don't forget to graph the purple line. The purple line is at 140. You know, we need to we need to make sure that that's visible because that's when both coffee cups are safe to drink. And there we go. We have I have I have some dots and a line, but the goal is that you transfer these points to your space. So get a good look, add them up, put them in there. Skip forward a couple seconds in the video. Okay, suppose both cups are poured at the same time and both are left sitting. I'm on the next page, I'm on page 19. Suppose both cups are poured at the same time and both are left sitting in the room that's 75 degrees, but this time milk is immediately poured into cup two and it's cooled instantly to an initial temperature of 162 degrees Fahrenheit. So for cup one, we have T sub zero is 180, T sub A is 75, and then we have our K value, 0.2337. But for cup two, T sub zero is instantly 162, T sub A is 75, and K is 0.2337. So I can go back to Desmos right quick and change the seven, the, the both equations so that they, they show the information that I want. For example, I want the 42 degrees to become 75 degrees, and I want the 180 to become 162 degrees, and I want the 42 to become 75. We have two equations. We still have that cup two is the green function. Both are safe to drink. Both are safe to drink when the, the coffee is below 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Like that was like a lawsuit thing, if you ever remember hearing about that. Some lady, she sued because hot coffee from McDonald's got spilled all over her lap. And it was horrible, and it scarred her for life. But she made some money because people were dumb. Don't be dumb. Okay, coffee cup two is safe to drink. So you see its initial value is 162. It still descends in an exponential curve decay model. But where this line crosses is about 100 and, uh, one minute, 1.22 minutes. So... Coffee cup two, safe to drink at 1.22 minutes. Gosh, what was it before? It was safe to drink at 1.465 minutes. That was before. So yeah, adding the milk, a different initial value, definitely lower initial value, definitely makes the amount of time it takes for the coffee cup to reach cooler temperatures better. Let's see what other scenarios we got. We're, model we're messing with some things. Oh, um, you know, graph. If you're using Desmos, it's easy to kind of quick sketch these points. And I'm just rounding these decimals to the nearest 10 or 5, something super close. And then just taking a guesstimation from there. Let's see. Let's go to 20. Page 20. Okay. I, I should say, you know, page 20. I'm not going to do this one for you. This is extra practice. Yes, you need to do it yourself. But I've given you everything you need to know about. So pause the video. Go back and scrub through and watch what you need to watch in order to be able to answer this one. Don't forget T sub A, T sub 0, and K. T sub A, T sub 0, and K. And then plug them in to the Newton's law of cooling equation. Thank you, Isaac Newton, for giving us that equation. In closing, in closing for day three, part of mathematical modeling is identifying how the information given matches each piece of the linear or exponential general equation. So what does A help you to find? What does, let's start with B. What does B help you to find? We talked about this. What does A help you to find? What does D help you to find? And then I put C last of all because sometimes, you know, sometimes it's there. It's a shift or some sort of thing. 
All right, there are extra problems for you to do. You need to do the exit ticket. You need to do the problem set. The problem set is more or less just like, well, not just like, it's not about cooling, but it's about lionfish. You know, those beautiful spiky things found in the Asian waters that have been brought to North America. Now an invasive species. And um, please go ahead and do some mathematical uh, work with this one. I would fill out the table. The thing I want to remind you about the problem set for day three is that if there's one sighting in 1985, then in 1992 there's a new sighting, one new lionfish, the total number of sightings is two. In 1995, if there's three new sightings, then the total number of sightings is five. How is he doing that? Six. What is he doing? Okay, just continue filling out the table. Hopefully you see the pattern because if you don't, oh my gosh, ask someone else. All right, that's it for today. Um, will you go ahead and be ready to watch Lesson 18, Day 4? But that won't be ready until Tuesday. Okay, and uh, goodbye.